In this lesson, we're going to create a view model. And the first thing to do is define what a view model is. Right now in our program, we have our main window.xaml, and that's our view, that's the screen of the program. And we've created the player.cs, that's a model. In order for the player to play this game, we're going to need to create a player object and somehow get that player object's information into the main window screen. We could do that directly. The main window could just create a player object and work with it, but that causes a couple of problems. The first problem is if we want to test the program and we have our player object directly in the view, we're going to need to actually play the program and click on every button and do every action in the user interface, in the screens. As your programs get larger, it takes a long time to do that. What we really want to do is create some automated tests that can run quickly. But to have those automated tests, we need to make sure all of our game logic is not in the view, it's somewhere else. We're also going to need to be able to handle multiple objects. We're going to have a player object and a monster object, maybe some item objects. Maybe when the player has a pet that helps them fight, we'll have a pet object. And we need to have a place where we can manage all of those objects. We don't want to put them into the player. That doesn't make sense because a monster isn't part of a player. So we want another place to put that. And what that's going to be is the view model that's in the middle. So we're going to create this new game session class that will be our view model. The view will talk to it and the view model will talk to all the different models. And this is where we'll manage the game, the actual logic of the game. You may have heard of this pattern under different names. Sometimes the view model is called a presenter or sometimes it's called a controller. And when you write a program using this technique, you might say that you're using model view presenter MVP, model view controller MVC, or model view view model MVVM. There are some differences between a view model and a presenter and a controller, but for right now, they all kind of do the same thing. They go in between your views and your models, and somehow they manage the action that's going on in your program. So let's get to the code. In the engine project, I'm going to right click and add a new folder that I'm going to call view models. If you're creating this program, please use the same name, but remember you don't have to use view models when you create your other programs. It's not like it's a reserved word or you have to put your view models in a folder called view models. This is just how I'm organizing it for this program. Then I'll right click on the view models folder and select add new item and I'm going to add a new class that I will name game session.cs because this is the class we're going to use to manage the actual play session when the player is playing the game. Click on add and now I have my new class. If we look at the player class again real quickly we'll see that we have our properties here and the data types are string and int because the properties are going to hold either a string value or an int value. In the game session, we're going to want to have a property that holds a player object. So the data type for that is going to be player because it's going to match this player class. To hold the current player information, I'm going to create a property called current player and the data type will be player. Very similar to how we have the properties in the player class. But if you look over here, the player data type has a red squiggly line underneath it. That means there's an error. If we hover over this, we see the type or namespace name player could not be found. Because the game session class is in the view models folder, its namespace is engine.viewmodels. That's where the game session object lives but the player class is in engine.models. That's the namespace where it lives. And right now the game session class only knows about other classes that are in engine view models. To tell it to look in the engine models namespace, we're going to add a new using statement up at the top. I'm going to say using engine.models semicolon. And the semicolon is how C sharp knows you're at the end of the line. And now the error goes away because now the game session class 
knows to look for other classes in the engine.models namespace. So now we have our view model class, the game session class, and it has a property where we can store a player. So let's create a player object and put it in the current player property. For this lesson, we'll build the player object inside the game session class, but in the future we'll actually do it from either a player creation screen or load it from disk. This will just be a way to demonstrate how to create a new object. So far in our two classes, we only have properties, but now we need to create a method or a function. And we're going to create a special type of function called a constructor. When you want to create an object of a class, which is remember kind of like filling in the blank form, you're going to call the constructor on the class and that will construct or build the object for that class. If you don't define a constructor, .NET still knows how to make the class, but you'll want to define a constructor if you want to do anything special when you create the class. And in this case, when we create a game session class, we want it to automatically create a player for us. So that's why we need to build the constructor for this class. Now I'll create an empty constructor for the game session class. The way you do that is within the curly braces for the class, so that this belong this function belongs to the game session class, we're going to do public game session, and we have to match uppercase G and uppercase S, open parentheses, close parentheses, and then open curly brace and close curly brace. So this is the constructor. When we say we want to create a game session object, this code in here is going to run. And the thing we want our game session constructor to do is create a new player and put that into the current player property. To do that, we'll say current player equals new player, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon. And what this line does, whenever you see a single equal sign that says evaluate whatever's on the right side, just do whatever's there, and whatever results you get, put that into the property or the variable on the left side of the equal sign. So this is going to construct a new player and put that into the current player property. You might have noticed that Visual Studio tried to be helpful and put the models dot in front of the player, so that way we know exactly what namespace this is coming from. But if we put our cursor over it, we see name can be simplified. So we can just delete that and make the code a little bit shorter, a little bit cleaner. Right now, if our program created a game session object, it would run this constructor, which would create a new player object and put that in the game session's current player property. What I'd like to do next is set some values on the current player object. Taking a quick look at the player class, we've got the name property, the character class. So I want to say in our game session, after we create this player, I'm going to set the current player's name. I do that by creating a new line and say current player. And I want to do dot name equals quote Scott. So what this line should do is take everything on the right of the equal sign, which is just the string Scott, and put it into the name property of the current player property. But if you notice, there's red squiggly lines underneath name. That's telling us we have another error. If I hover over it, it says player.name is inaccessible due to its protection level. Another concept you need to be aware of is something called scope. The scope is where a property or a class or a variable is visible, where the rest of the program can see it. And when you see an error like this, where it says something is inaccessible due to its protection level, that means the scope of the name property is not open enough so that the game session can see it. We'll go back to the player class. And if you notice right here, we just have class player and then we have our properties. We haven't specifically set any scope for the class or for the properties. So it's using the default values. 
Right now, we'll change these to public. So the line that says class player, we're going to change to public class player. So that means this class, the player class, is visible everywhere in the solution. And we'll also do that for our properties. We'll say public string, public string, and then set the integer properties to public also. In the future, we'll do some more work with the scope, but for right now, we're just going to set them to public to make them visible everywhere so we can go back to our game session class and see that our error is gone. Now that the player name property is public, the game session can see it and it can set a value to it. And I also want to make this player a millionaire. So I'm going to set the current player's gold property to a million. Now notice when I type the dot after current player, we get this drop down box. This is IntelliSense in Visual Studio, and it's showing us all the properties that are visible, plus a few extra functions. Current player gold equals one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one million. So now when this line runs, it will take a million. There's nothing to calculate there, so it'll just put that value right into current player dot gold. Now let's build this to make sure there aren't any errors. Just go up to the menu and click Build, Rebuild Solution. When we look down at the bottom of Visual Studio in the output box, we see two succeeded, zero failed. So we know we don't have any errors and we're good. If you're using source control, this would be the time when you would want to save the most recent version. And in the next lesson, we're going to connect this game session to the view and actually start displaying the player information the current player name, the gold, and the levels, and all that. If you have any questions about anything in this video, please leave a comment below or look in the description box, and there'll be a link to the support page on my site. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson.